Altanthera phylloxorides, more commonly known as alligator weed, can grow on water and land and is recognised as one of the worst weeds in the world. It is known as one of the world's worst weeds in part due to the damage it causes to the environment and the difficulty in its control and eradication. Alligator weed is an invasive weed that has been declared noxious in all Australian states and territories. It can tolerate herbicides and can spread quite easily. According to the New South Wales Alligator Weed Strategy, alligator weed currently impacts primary production, biodiversity, the environment, tourism, recreation and the economy. Alligator weed is currently having the greatest impact in New South Wales. It is estimated that 3,950 hectares of alligator weed can be found in New South Wales, which is a relatively small amount compared to the rest of the world. The spread of alligator weed must be controlled in Australia before it reaches the amount of devastation it has caused in other countries. For example, the cost spent managing alligator weed in China each year is 72 million US dollars. The aquatic environment is adversely affected as alligator weed outcompetes, displaces and negatively affects aquatic flora and fauna. This is achieved through the blanketing of the water surface which impedes the penetration of light and gaseous exchange, sometimes leading to anaerobic conditions. The Sydney Weeds Committee further elaborates on the impacts on biodiversity by listing vegetation communities specifically at risk from alligator weed. Once a weed is established, it is rarely eradicated. The best place to look for alligator weed would be in wet areas such as drainage lines, waterways, wet depressions, swampy areas, floodplains and in bankside vegetation. Barren box swamp is an example of why there needs to be good control methods and plans in action. In barren box swamp, a large infestation has already cost more than $3 million to control. However, if it had been left unchecked, it is estimated that it could have cost the irrigation farmers up to $250 million annually. Bergen, Norris and Carlson explain that the priority target areas are generally not native ecosystems. Instead, the focus lies in the areas that have the greatest potential for economic loss. A survey was conducted using the local government weed management offices in New South Wales, which outlined that 98.1% of the people interviewed agreed that alligator weed posed a serious threat to natural ecosystems, and almost 80% of the respondents deemed that the resources to control the weed were insufficient. Bergen and Norris state that if the necessary resources for research and management are not provided, the spread will lead to the erosion of biodiversity. Better than controlling the spread would be preventing the spread. CRC Weed Management mentions that early detection is most cost effective. This can be accomplished through several methods, including an increase in awareness and education. To minimise the adverse effects of alligator weed on the environment, more people need to be involved. The general public need to be made aware of what alligator weed looks like so that it can be reported on first sight, allowing the best chance of eradication. The importance of early detection should not be underestimated as it can dramatically reduce the rate of spread. I would like to encourage everyone to learn to recognise alligator weed and keep an eye out for it in your local area. If seen, it should be reported to your local council immediately. Do not try to remove or manage the weed yourself. The following video by the Department of Environment and Primary Industries will help you to learn how to identify it. This is alligator weed. Alligator weed can grow in the water or on the ground. When it grows in the water, it can float on top of the surface or be attached to the bank. It can also grow in a garden situation as an upright stand or creeping amongst other vegetation or flat in the lawn. Alligator weed leaves are bright green and grow in opposite pairs along the stem. The stems are hollow and the flowers grow in papery round balls on individual stalks. The roots of alligator weed are long and fibrous and where the stems have joints and come into contact with the water, the plant will take root.